All right, the potatoes came out of the oven. I'm gonna show you here how they came out. They ended up taking actually about 10 more minutes, but you know, these are big potatoes and I don't usually have such big ones. They didn't get as brown as I would have liked and needed my dark pan, but I wanna show you how I'm going to eat this now because what I did is I topped it with my salad fixings. I, I took my salad here and I, it's got onion and cabbage and arugula and I didn't, I, I would have put peppers in too, some sweet peppers, but I didn't have any sweet peppers, red or yellow ones to put in. I'm saving my green ones for something else I want to make. And But I, I put the dressing on it. I mixed it all up with my hands. I got it good and mixed up. And then I'm topping my potato. So that's, that's sort of a potato taco, I'm calling it. I don't know what else you'd call it. A, a deviled potato. <laughs> it like, makes me think of deviled eggs. I haven't had a deviled egg in five years, but yeah, and I'm not going to try and eat it while you're watching because that's going to be, I think it's going to be a little messy, but you can see it makes a fun little boat. And I do like those potatoes that way because they're very uh, tasty. They have a lot of flavor from the herbs and, and how they bake. Now I can do that. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I like those. I like those baked potatoes that way. And I got my mom hooked on them too. She makes them now because she likes to have them in the fridge. And when she's hungry during the day, she goes and grabs a potato and eats it. So, so that's that's how you make those. These are what I call the half baked potatoes. They're actually a baked half potato. They're not half baked, but it's a baked half potato. And I'm topping it with uh, vegetables or dressing, and I'm making a a taco potato. All right, we'll see you in the lesson. And. You know, we spent the last couple of days talking about faith and talking about the faith of Jesus versus our faith. We're in Galatians chapter two for the most part, a little bit one, a little bit two. And we're we're still gonna we're gonna stay there. We're gonna <laughs> there's still more to learn in this verse. Um because we were talking about okay, we don't we don't have to worry about our faith so much because it's the faith of Jesus that we're we're putting our, our trust in that because he is in us and it's his faith, his believing faith and trust. So I'm, I'm doing more looking into faith because I, I go back and I'm listening to these videos. Okay. I'm learning. I'm still learning even when I listen to my own videos. And I know that sounds goofy. Like, well, you're the one who did the video. Don't you know it? Actually, I don't. I am learning at the same time that you are. That as, as I start teaching, I am hearing things that I didn't know. Okay, the Holy Spirit is using this to give me wisdom and understanding at the moment. And some things I understand ahead of time, but some things are just coming out right now. And I go back and listen because just because I read it once or twice or just because I've heard it once or twice doesn't mean I know it. And it doesn't mean I'm living it yet. It doesn't mean I'm thinking it yet. So I am working to incorporate these new ideas that we're talking about this week, okay? And this is this is the next step that I want to talk about um, in a couple different ways. Since we're talking about faith and and incorporating these this greater depth of understanding into our daily walk because again we don't want to be hearers hearers only of the word we want to be doers and in order to do it has to be a part of us so in order to be a part of us we need to, to ponder it we need to work on it we need to speak it out of our mouths so that it becomes so much a part of our thinking that it's like oh you feel like you always thought that way which of course we haven't but we want to get to that point where it feels like it's always been a part of us so that when we hear something that's contrary to it, we'll know right away. Or when we see um, something in scripture, we'll recognize it right away. And, and in our life, we'll be able to apply it and, and walk it out in faith right away. That's important. So we're talking about faith. We're talking about the faith, our faith in the faith of Jesus. Now, the next thing is, what is faith? We're to have it, but what is it? Isn't faith, faith is a, a funny word when you think about all the different ways it's used and 
what do what does one person mean by faith versus versus what another person means by faith well i hadn't picked up on that yet apparently it wasn't time to teach it until today until i was listening to the video from yesterday or the day before and it was it was must have been yesterday because it was verse 2 galatians 2 16 and i was reading in it and it was the the word um the the amplified version of faith is constant reliance that's what faith means it means constant reliance and i was like oh that's that's a really good explanation because when people tell us well have faith it's like oh how do i have faith what do i have faith in what what does that mean to have faith and, and if you feel like your faith is weak or something like that, well, it means to have constant reliance. And I thought, oh, that does help clarify. So I want to read the verse again. Bear with me. Galatians 2.16. I did, I'm sharing with you the amplified version, okay, with the extra words of explanation from the dictionary to help clarify what we're reading here, Okay. Is starting at 15, 2, 15, and 16, because I, I like the way 2, 15 kind of builds into it. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of Gentiles perceive and understand that a man is not rendered innocent or just by the doing of the law and regulations, but by faith, which is the constant reliance of Jesus Christ. Even we have entrusted our well-being in Christ that we might be righteous and justified by the faith of Christ for salvation. I was like, wow, that's good. The constant reliance of Jesus Christ. So I'm thinking about that because there's, there's a couple people that I know who are, who are struggling right now to, to have faith in certain areas and I was thinking about the, the, the terms that we use sometimes when we talk about faith. We talk about taking a leap of faith. We talk about steps of faith. We talk about one foot in front of the other as being blind faith. But you know what God says? God says, be still knowing that I am God. He doesn't ask us to leap. He doesn't ask us to step. He doesn't ask us to be blind. He tells us to be still and know that I am God. That's from Psalm 4610. So it, I know I'm bringing in another scripture here, but this, our scripture, scriptures support one another. And the Old Testament and the New Testament are definitely linked. And when he's talking about the faith of Jesus, remember I was saying we don't have to strive now. We don't have to ha somehow have faith in our faith. We don't have to have faith in our faith. And I recently heard that, heard someone teach on that, that you don't, that you get yourself in trouble when you're trying, when you put faith in your own faith. And I didn't understand what they meant. But now I understand. Based on the Galatian scripture and the understanding that our faith is in the faith of Jesus, it just, it, it helped me to understand when they said, you can't have faith in your own faith. Our faith has to be in his. So, it, it, in, in Jesus' faith. And this scripture, Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God, goes right along with that. Stop striving and trust and put your faith in God and, and know what he has for you. So, be still comes from the still word is uh, based on the word Rafa, which is 7503 in the Concordance. And in the Hebrew, because it's Old Testament Psalms, they're all in the um, Hebrew, means to abate, cease, let alone, slack, and be still. It has other meanings too, but they're, they don't, they're not appropriate for this. These are the ones that would be appropriate for what, what it's saying. Uh, it's not saying be a sloth, which was one of them. It was, but it means to, to stop, to, to stop, you know, like to stop fretting and to cease striving and stop working over worries, you know, let it alone, slack off on that and be still and know 
So let's look up, I looked up the word no, and that's number 3045 in the strong concordance, yada. So it's Rafa and yada. It probably rhymed or something when they did it. But anyhow, the different meanings for no that are appropriate and will amplify our understanding of the meaning of no are acknowledge that he is God, be aware that he is God, comprehend that he is God. I don't know if we can do that. Discover that he is God. I like that one. Have knowledge that he is God. Perceive that he is God. Have respect that he is God. Be sure that he is God and understand that he is God. And isn't that good? Those are, it's, it really gives a lot more depth to that. You know, we're going to cease from our strivings and be still. And we're going to um, be aware and discover and perceive that he is God. And it's, you know, it's the faith that we have in Jesus is no different than the faith they had back then. We all have to, it's always been salvation by faith. It's always been salvation by faith. So... We just have a, a different, better, perhaps a clearer understanding of it now in, in many ways. So, I told you all that to tell you this. It's time to get out the index cards, okay? In order to make these things that we're learning of value, we have to remember them and we have to apply them. We have to live them out. The, I've heard statistics that, you know, about reading things and hearing things, and you get so much more out of it, the more, the more senses that you involve. So we're, we're he hearing, we're seeing, if you write it down, if we say it, if you teach it, which is where I'm coming in here, it's going to help me because now I'm trying to share it with you guys for understanding. But we, we've got to be doers of the word. So get out a notebook. I like index cards. I, I like them and I don't, and I'll tell you why, because I tend to lose them. I had a whole nice little stack of cards that I wanted to do every morning, and I don't know where I've left them. I, you know, because I take them all around the house with me. They're in my purse, they're in my coat, they're in my vest, they're in my kitchen, they're in the bedroom. I don't know where they ended up. And it's like nuts. I had them all in order for what I wanted to do. So I <laughs> start over again. But in the meanwhile, when I do have them with me, it's great because I want to, I want his word to be a part of me. He says we must renew our minds and we're the ones to do it. He's not the one who renews our minds. That's our job. So I want, I'm going to put these verses down, the parts of these verses that I need to understand that we are saved by the faith of Jesus that I can be still and know that he is God. He says, I am God, be still and know that I am God. And I will put some of those other words down, like perceive and discover. I like that, perceive and discover that I am God. Yeah, all right. I, I hope that was helpful to you. I hope um, it, it builds you up and encourages you. And, and I, I pray this strengthens you in your journey.